Well, the drought monitor once again looking better this week. Much of the state of Nebraska is drought free, which is always good news. And we've seen improvements in areas that are still in that drought. Kansas seeing some improvements as well, but definitely not as much as we are seeing in the state of Nebraska. Now our six to, day, six to 10 day temperatures, we're looking at around below average temperatures for Nebraska and Kansas above average on the East Coast, near normal slots in areas as well, and then above average on the West Coast. Taking a look at our 30 day temperatures, portions of Nebraska are looking at below average once again, Kansas equal chances for below average or above average, and some above average temperatures to the south and also once again on the west coast. Taking a look at our 90 day temperatures below average for much of the area, a lot like what we saw on the 30 day temperatures, but it does include take out portions of eastern Nebraska and parts of Kansas equal chances for above average or below average temperatures. Above average temperatures once again likely to the south and on the west coast. Our six to 10 day precipitation above average for the East Coast in the Central Plains. We're looking at equal chances two to above average or below average. We'll have to wait and see on that. And then below normal chances for that precipitation on the West Coast above a big slot of above average 30 day precipitation chances equal chances once again in the Central Plains also spreading across the Midwest and then below chances the probability in the south. Now taking a look at our 90 day precipitation chances near average for a good portion of the eastern United States above average for portions of Nebraska as well and portions of western Kansas good chances for some precipitation and then equal chances for other areas of those states. Taking a look at our almanac, our average high this time of year, normally around 88 degrees. Our average low is normally around 64 through Friday. It's looking like our average high will be around 89. Our average low around 67. And there is our proverb of the week as well. Now you sent us some pictures and here they are. Time now for a visit from our farm market analyst, Jeff Peterson of Heartland Farm Partners. Jeff, we knew that the soybean planting was going to be pretty high this year, and the governor reported that. So how will this impact the market? You know, we've actually seen that already happen this week. Um, coming in on this today, we're actually seen from the highs before the report on Monday, it's down a dollar a bushel. That's very significant. And to put this in perspective, the crop report actually stated there'd be 84.8 million bushel or acres actually planted. That's up 11% from last year and actually be the highest amount of soybean acres we've ever planted in the U.S. Not by a small amount, but by over 7 million acres. That's, that's a lot of soybeans. And what we do expect to see there is we do expect to see soybean prices unfortunately go lower. Um, we think there could be another dollar and 50 cents lower as a matter of fact. Oh, wow. And so there was a crop report that came out on Monday for those then? Yeah, exactly. So that was part of the report. So there was the acres report. Now on the corn, they also gave us some corn numbers. That came in about 91.6 million acres of corn. That was about as the trade expected, but even that ended up sending the markets down about 31 cents for the week. And so um, what does that mean then for farmers? Yeah, this is the big question. You asked it greatly. As you look around, there's a lot of these crops look very good. We are looking for lower prices as we go forward. So it's going to be very, very important that they keep a close eye on the markets and make sure that they're taking the necessary steps to protect themselves um, so that they're able to still have some profits when it comes time at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And well, I know so many people, that's, I mean, the reason why there's so much soybeans is because of the low corn price. And then if there's low soybean prices too, that doesn't sound all that great. No, it doesn't. And that's, that's 
that's the challenge that we're running into right now. Now we do have a global market, so we'll have to continue to watch China and South America for how their production, and we do have to still go ahead and make sure we have good weather from now on out. So this crop isn't in the bin yet, but we're getting very close to knowing the size of it. All right, well thank you so much, Jeff. Generations come together with an attitude of giving back to the community. We'll have their story, our Farm Family of the Month, up next.